let me see. One. Oh, it's, it's not just like wallowing in complexity. How am I doing this? Whoa, right? Podcasting or improving your life is about making better steps to move to a better direction. And there are people out there that have done the successful, people that have been successful in creating this medium for you to explore. And what I think is so interesting about this is that you can take their success and you can mold your own ideas after after it again you don't need to do what they're doing i mean you can try to recreate it but what's even cooler is that you can take their structure you can take their ideas and then you can try to create your own special little thing and i think that it's this creation process that really does help people get outside of that mindset that they can't do something that they can't be a certain way that they can't create something that has value for other people and that is what is so so cool welcome back welcome back sir we're just talking in, into this podcast jay you know you got me on this podcast thing i've been talking this podcast talk for the past seven eight minutes um we're talking right now about building ourselves up with knowledge of structure and copying more successful people the structural parts of successful people's podcasts you can copy their material but what i think is more important is copying their structure creating a mold for yourself like a cup like this 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 cup right here right this cup right here creating a mold and then filling your own ideas in the mold that's the water and you can drink it you can share it with other people and it can be just like 99 bottles of beer on the wall 99 bottles of beer you take one down pass it around 98 bottles of beer on the wall 98 bottles of beer on the wall 98 bottles of beer you take one down pass it around 97 bottles of beer on the wall everyone can enjoy this everyone can be a part of this message and here's what it is jay would you like to come on the show today would you like to come on the on the show today if you can hop on discord we can talk about this right now and i'm gonna do um i'm gonna go do something what 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 do you talk about in a podcast uh ideas ideas in the imagination station we're about to change up our title right now let me just get you in, sir. Um, we just changed our title to this podcast idea. I'm going to open up Discord really quick. And we can talk about it, man. We can talk about it because I'm always open for suggestions. I'm always open to listen to these things. Because, Like I said, it's a constant building process. So if you go over to my Super Genki squad and you hop into general chat, um, we can have a conversation there if you'd like, sir. When I when I think about making value for other people, it has to start with myself because if I can't make value for myself, then what does it matter for other people? I, first and foremost, want to be making progress. And by progress, it means I want to talk to people. I want to learn things. I want to be able to consistently up the ante of what I'm making. And it's hard because you always get the momentum rolling in the beginning, but then you lose your motivation and then it just... it falls back on you and i tried making a podcast a while ago i did i called it the rock bottom podcast where i just talked about failures and the ideas of just losing all this stuff and um you know it was cool for like a week and then the second week wasn't that great because like i just like supersetted it with like drawing something but um i think people really do respect um respect you trying to create value it's, it's so interesting anyway Jay, um, if you're ready to hop in any any day, I, I have you here. Your your mic is muted, and I'm deafened, by the way. But um, I'm unmuted now. I believe you will be able to hear me. So everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Mr. Gay Jay. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing fantastic. You know what? I think today has been the first day where I have been rebuilding my life. And Jay, do you ever feel like sometimes your life gets super knocked down and all of a sudden you feel like everything is going to crap and there's no way of getting out of the situation? Yeah, it's 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 so weird because I, I totally get it. And when I came back from um, Spain, because I was recently living there, 
what happened was is that I fell into this cycle of just oh, coronavirus again. Oh no, self quarantine. Oh no. And it just took me about a month to get myself back on the right foot. So what do you what do you think always helps you get back on the right foot? So would you say that it's other people or it's sharing your experiences that really allows you to overcome these um, overcome these these hardships of life? Yeah, because I totally agree with that sentiment. And you know what's weird? For some reason, I think that people tend to be very narcissistic and selfish when they're going through hard times. Like, I know I am. I am the biggest narcissist. Like, I'll shut myself off to the whole world and just be like, you know what? It's okay. Um, I, I'll, I have to go through this alone because it's my struggle, my battle. I'll be like, nah, this is not my problem. It's like, I, I can handle it myself. If they can't do it, then like, you know, I'll kind of hold it back. I, I agree. And, you know, it's, it's a human thing. But let's bring it back to this idea of podcasting. Because, you know, I think that one of the big reasons that people even get into these slumps of life is because they lose focus on the structure of where they're going, you know, the structure of how they want to move forward. Do you, do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree, actually. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, you, you mentioned to me earlier today that you would have been interested in, in, in doing a podcast. And I was like, podcast? I don't even know what a podcast is. I don't listen to podcasts. This doesn't make sense to me. But then I started thinking about it. And... I think that the first step is just thinking about something. And is that like the, the good step for structure for you as well? Yeah, because you have to have a topic of what you're going through every podcast, if you know what I'm saying. So you got to like think about it. Yeah. You got to plan. You have to really put in some effort. It's not just like a wake up, roll out of bed. <laughs> oh, here I'm here. I'm doing a podcast now. It's um, it's hard, especially when you're doing it alone, right? Yeah, exactly. So what do you think is something you would like to talk about in a podcast, for example? For me, I, I do all these streams. I always talk about positive thinking, optimism, motivation, exploration. We're doing some writing about Japan today. I don't know. You were here in my earlier morning stream and um what's something that you think you would like to talk about in a podcast i mean honestly i haven't even thought of that i was like hmm, i just want to do it so like all these topics i need to kind of think about you know what i'm saying yeah and you know it's kind of like that structure that we were talking about earlier right because you know i think my dad told me this a long time ago. he was like anyone can sell 200 shirts and i'm like dude man i don't know about you but i because back when i was in college i started this um business called super genki life which is my it's my brand image and i haven't put a lot of work into building it but i remember that when i started the business i sold like 200 shirts in like two months and um but what happened was that i was so focused on going to japan that i lost all my structure and my hype for selling the shirts and I haven't sold a shirt in like over a year and a half and um i think it was that loss in structure that was really big so jay tell me what what do you think what do you what's your favorite hobby that you like to bring out to people uh i usually like to show them a lot about like different styles of music and like how different types of genres you have your subgenres and stuff i'm like a massive music fan so i mean so you're a massive music fan, and do you think that maybe something podcasting about music would be something that you might be interested in? Definitely, 100%. Yeah, because I think that, you know, I just recently got back to listening to music, and by listening to music, I am um, I have this, this thing called arrested development, which means I, um, it's a psychological term to state that 
You'll find something and you'll be content with it so you won't seek to find new things. And eventually your mind will just get trapped in this this one thing. Like you listen to the same song for literally a year and then all of a sudden you won't be able to listen to music anymore because you're like, oh, I don't I don't want to put in more I don't want to put more effort into trying to find new music. That's one of the things that I've really been um I've never done that in my life. You've never done that? No, I tend to find a lot of songs all the time. Yeah. Four or five songs. Like currently, right now, I have five songs in one playlist on repeat. And then I'll find another song coming out and I'll be like, oh, this is a good song. And that will join the playlist. And then I'll come to like 10 songs in there. And then at one point, I'll have 100 in there. And then I'll be like, wow. And I'll just have them all playing. Really, really. And how do you find new music? I'm curious. Um, most of the time, it's through recommendations of others. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I listen to so many genres, I just kind of gathered them saying oh this is coming out oh this sounds similar to this band and i'll branch out from there i think that's a great idea because um i think you already have the tools to create a podcast about music since it's a hobby you like and you can share with people the music that you like and um you can create the structure faster because you have the tools right i think what stops a lot of people is that they know they want to do something right they know they need structure, but they're working with their bare hands, right? Can you imagine trying to chisel a rock with your bare hands? I could never. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine it in, in, in like some alternate universe? No. Yeah, me neither. I just be there like rah 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 rah. I just be throwing a tantrum, just like trying to hit the rock. But at the end of the day. No, I feel I feel like my hands would break before the rock even moved an inch, right? I feel like that would really hurt. But what I think is so cool about this is that you can give a person a chisel and a hammer and then they can sculpt the rock, the rock right? And maybe it won't be super fast, but they can still do it. And that's the creating the structure that helps you create the structure much faster, right? And when we're talking about linear progression and being consistent, right? It's having something to talk about every week that's gonna make you want to keep going, having an idea that's gonna keep pushing you forward to wanna talk about something, wanna share a um, share something with other people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually. Like, I mean like, you have to kind of like have the specific ways to do it and what you want to talk about each mm -hmm. week and all that stuff. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I remember a while ago I did this, um, back when I was in Spain, I was feeling really down on myself. I was like, oh, my life. Oh, I don't want to reach out to anyone. I just want to be a mental masochist and just go through my problems by myself. Rawr, 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 rawr. So what I ended up doing was I ended up like creating this rock bottom podcast and I just talked about like how crap all of my situations have been for the past couple of years. I've been like, dude, man, so many mistakes, so much failing. But then at the end of the day, I was like, you know, I feel better now. But then you run out of failures to talk about. You can only talk about failure so much before you run out of stuff to talk about. And um, I don't know. I think that if I were to make a podcast, it'd have to be something more interactive. And um, maybe like a once a week kind of thing because we're talking about what are we even going to podcast about and oh dude i have no idea jay i have no idea i mean to start right bring up the topic and figure it out but i'm thinking about the topic because i do these twitch streams right and i used to do them every day it's not it hasn't been as consistent nowadays because um i've just been all over the place and all over the place i've been in many i don't want to say depression but i've been in bouts of like sadness and grief and like mourning for my previous life because when i lived in spain that was the most content i have ever been like i was living so so contently now i have to come back home and i have to scream at my brothers and sisters to get to school because my parents are busy working and it's like I put my I took, I took myself from a great place and then I put myself back in the middle <laughs> and um, now I'm just all about readjusting to my life here and um, if I get back into streaming and I start streaming every day I'm gonna be talking about a vast number of things but what do you think could separate Gen J what do you think could separate a 
a stream from a podcast, right? What would separate that? Uh, that's the thing. I have no idea. Because, like, streaming platforms can also kind of be used as a podcast platform. Yeah. So, like, even if it's, like, interactive or not, it's kind of, like, almost the same thing, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. And tell me, Jay, what would you like to hear in a podcast? I'm curious. I usually watch podcasts on, like, very, like important questions like for example benefits of like bilingualism or like what exactly is like a soulmate true love kind of stuff mm -hmm. like i'm like big questions you know what i'm saying yeah and could you give me a little rundown give me a summary or a synopsis of one of these podcasts because i'm interested in hearing what they're about i am um, i'm not a podcasty person so i don't really know but give me a little summary um basically one of the well, I watched it from this one particular guy because I used to listen to his music before he came and started doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. But this one guy started talking about, for example, what the bi what bilingualism does and how good it is. Mm -hmm. And he started bringing up different facts about it to see if he could believe that it's useful or not with different re types of research and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it was. And tell me, I'm curious, what did he find in his research? Uh, he found out that it helps with cognitive skills. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, it helps people learn how to like multitask better in a way, or like switch from one circuit to another. Because mm -hmm. if you speak more than one language, you have to know who to speak which language to and mm -hmm. when. So mm -hmm. it helps with that kind of stuff. It even helps with like social cues mm -hmm. because of how fast your brain can transfer things, all that kind of stuff. And tell me, Jay, are you from America or Canada? Canada. Canada. You want to hear a joke? Sure. What do you call someone that speaks three languages? I don't know. Tell me. Trilingual. Yeah. What do you call someone that speaks two languages? Bilingual. What do you call someone that speaks one language? Lingual. American, because Americans only speak English. That seems legit, actually. It's a pretty legit joke, and the international community loves it. And, um, I... Huh? It's not wrong. It's not wrong. And you could say UK, is, UK Australia... <laughs> you, most of Western civilization really is only English. The big hitters over here. And, um, I think... I'm, um, I'm trilingual. Um, so when I think about... The way I use languages, like for example, and at my job that I work at, and today was my first day at my job. I want to talk about that a little more later. Um, there's a woman that speaks Japanese there, one of the waiters, and then everyone else speaks Spanish and then English, right? So I'm always speaking English on the phone, but then some of the people only respond to Spanish, and then I speak to Japanese with um, the other server, and it's like it's interesting just having those dynamics, and I think that. Um, there's definitely a big benefit in learning more than one language. But what do you think stops people? Or what did you hear in this podcast? Why do people not want to learn another language? Some had these theories, like way back. It's like a really old one. And apparently, like, would you kind of only, when you learn multiple languages, they say that it genuinely slowed down your brain mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Some people don't have the, like, motivation i guess to pick up that one extra yeah. first language that gives you the better cue for other languages mm -hmm. which might be it yeah i totally get that because you know i i speak spanish and japanese but i asked me how long it's been since i've studied either spanish or japanese and it's been literal months and um i mean I speak a lot more Japanese than I do Spanish and a lot more English than I do Japanese. So it's like it's like a Pac-Man. Just Spanish is my weakest one and then English is my strongest one. Although you could argue against that because my just gra my grammar and my grammar is just not good in any language. I just haven't mastered grammar altogether. Um, but I think I think it's interesting and you know what it sounds to me. It sounds like the people that do these podcasts are well researched. Would you say that? Oh, definitely. They have, like, sites set up and everything. Like, it's like a whole company. It's a whole company, right? So do you think that in order to do a podcast, you would also need to be well-researched? 
I mean, of course, you need to have different things and different ways to set it up, like a pre-show thing. You can have like all of your structure that we want to talk about and when and all that stuff. So do you think that like, if I were to do a podcast, I need to prepare for it for like at least two to three days in advance. It would be like a preparation kind of thing, right? Of course, yeah, definitely. And that's that's something that's that's difficult, I find. I mean, it's interesting that we have so much free time. Like, we have a lot more free time than we think we do. Most people living in Western civilizations have a lot more free time than they than they than they talk about, right? But what do you think stops a lot of people from using their free time to plan effectively for things like podcasts? Um, again, there's a motivation. That's a factor, right? Yeah. Like, if you want to kind of like have the best podcast you need to have the time that's settled like a set schedule and say, okay i'm gonna get this kind of information today this one tomorrow and see what i can put together no one like not know much people who have the time the dedication to sit down for hours on end just searching things up mm -hmm. like i can do it mm -hmm. but here's what i think is interesting right because we have these passions we have these hobbies that we're interested in and we have knowledge on this already in our minds do you think that just a passion or a hobby is enough to start a podcast and if it gets more serious and you want to do more research down the road do you think that would be the time to start becoming more well versed i mean yes that could definitely work because i mean like of course you're gonna start slow right like even like for example you started with a youtube channel you're gonna have to like start with like a mini laptop mic and a camera and then work your way up yeah I know this. I've been doing YouTube for a long time and my computer is still broken. It's been broken for the past two years. Like this screen has been cracked for the past two years and I don't, I don't know what I'm doing with it. But, um, you know, I think that it's, it's really an issue of even more than motivation. I think that it's, it's consistency, right? And it's just if you're consistent with certain things in your life, and um, all of a sudden, if you're consistent with certain things in your life, it's easier to be consistent with something like this. But if you're inconsistent with certain things in your life, it might be harder to start something new, right? Because it was like you were, what you were saying about bilingualism. It was like, you know, you may not have enough energy to start learning that first language or putting in enough effort to really make something else, right? We have a, a comment from Mr. Moto Goyo. Happy New Year. Welcome to the stream today, Mr. Moto. You can do an investigative podcast where you either refer to existing material and compare and contrast or invite subject matter experts to take part. What subjects interest you? What subjects interest you? Well, Jay, first I'll ask you, Jay. What subjects interest you? I mean, like, again, I'm, I'm like, mostly interested into a lot of things. I mean, my most thing would be, like, music or whatever. But if someone wants to learn about how a left foot could be made, I'm down. But in terms of like something you could do with minimal effort, like what what's something you could like just passionately talk about for like a podcast, even if you had to do it alone? Because like for me, I couldn't share that interest in music because I, I just ha don't listen to music that much. So what could be something that you could like just do and be okay with doing by yourself? Um, I'm not sure actually. No idea. I'd have to think on that. I think that's a great question to answer. Now, as for me, Mr. Moto, what would I do a podcast about? If I were to do a podcast, it's it's weird because I do a lot of streaming as well. And I talk about a lot of my ideas during stream. So I would think that if it was a podcast, it would need to be focused, right? And I think that if it were going to be focused... Um, I have no idea. I mean, I'm thinking about talking about Japan. I'm thinking about talking about Spain, talking about the countries that I've been to. Maybe a travel podcast, but... That sounds pretty interesting. I'm down for that too. Yeah, I think a travel... And in fact, Mr. Moto, we're gonna write this down in our notes to revisit for later. So possible ideas for a podcast would be a travel podcast because I have been to 11 countries and three continents in the past eight years. And that doesn't mark where I've been to because I've been to over 50 places in Japan. I've been to a bunch of places over here in the States as well, too. I think that um, a travel podcast could be cool. What are some other ideas? Because I, I talk about writing in my streams and writing is what I'm really passionate about. 
Um, and like Japan, like a Japan podcast, I don't know. I would probably need some help to talk about Japan in a podcast, right? I mean, But, yeah. You can always bring in special guests who would be willing to talk about Japan. Like if you know some people who are Japanese and would like to talk about it, invite them in, be like, hey, what's up? Or even like, for example, you could be the expert and bring someone who doesn't even know Japan and say like, hey, do you know about this? Yeah, you know, it's、um, it's interesting, Jay, that you say that because there's another streamer by the name of Keshin. He's a friend of mine who actually lives in Japan right now, and we've talked about Japan on stream before. But what I think would be interesting is trying to figure out a specific topic to explore. Because, like Mr. Moda was saying, doing like an investigative podcast, right? Because when you're investigating something, You have to like do some preparation beforehand, right? You can't just like come with your like little kaleidoscope or whatever, their monocles or whatever, and just be like, I'm ready to go.、Um, oh, Watson, whatever Sherlock Holmes says to Watson, <laughs> elementary, my dear Watson, because <laughs> I feel like you'll just get schooled if you don't do preparation. But、uh, Mr. Moto has another comment. Let me read that really quick. People often make podcasts about technical subjects, but the one skill to develop in life is understanding emotional intelligence. What really makes people tick? Why are some people immediately likable and others not so? That sounds like a really professional topic, Mardo. That sounds. Jay, what do you think about that topic? Because I understand emotional intelligence is so relative to being able to control our lives. I think so. Yeah, like definitely, like that's a pretty thick question. Because, like, if you think about, like, for example, Like, how much you can push someone's button before they actually get mad at you or get annoyed at you, all that kind of stuff.、Mm -hmm. You kind of like, like, have to know how, how to read the kind of, you know, figure it out. You know, it's interesting that he said that because I have a friend、um, who is a CEO of like this international, he was a CEO of this, he made a company, it was like an international software development company. And whenever I talk to him, he's always telling me about emotional intelligence. He's always like, Did you read this book yet? Did you buy this book? And I think that when you get into the higher echelons of creating things, and when you get into the more technical subject matter, you do need a higher degree of emotional intelligence. But, Mr. Moto, I have a question for you. Where would someone start about learning like that? Because. I mean, I could talk about emotional intelligence now from a first hand experience point of view, but、um, like, I don't know where I would start on this. And I think that a lot of people that, and Jay, you would agree with this, a lot of people that have these podcasts that are watched by lots of people are like, they're not just people, they're like companies, right? There's like a team of people that come together to create the, su the subject matter, right? Yeah, definitely. So, like and, it's a lot of effort. It, yeah,、so. it's, it's a lot of effort. It sounds like a lot of effort. So, where do you think an individual would start, right? And if, if we're going to go off this kind of idea of the individual、um, not having the time or the desire or the motivation to put in that effort, where would an individual start, right? That's my question to you,、right. Mr. Moto. But I think it's interesting. I think that、um, I think the travel podcast is not a bad idea.、Um, I would have to. But again, if I were to do this, I'd really have to plan it out and I would need to actually go find people in the travel community. Actually, this weekend is going to be. You reminded me, this weekend is going to be super hype because I'm going to Orlando and I'm going to see if I can go to Epcot and、um, take Twitch on an Epcot adventure over at Disney in,、um, in Orlando. It's going to be so much fun. It's gonna be so much fun if I can、That、do it. That sounds exciting. Yeah, I, Epcot is my favorite Disney park.、Um, I've been there twice, I remember. And one of the funniest stories, and this is something to,、um, this is something、um, that's cool. And do you know what the six degrees of separation are, Jay? No idea. So the six degrees of separation are I know someone here. Who knows someone else around the world that, and they can connect me with that person and we'll share a common interest? Oh. And、okay. I, I went to Epcot and I experienced the six degrees of communication. 
because I had a job in Kobe, Japan, as an English teacher, and I went to Epcot, and I went to Canada, and I said, hello, how do I say this in your language? And then this guy took a picture of me and sent it to his friend who worked at the same company that I was going to work to in Kobe, Japan, so that when I showed up in the office, the guy said, hey, you're super Genki, right? And I'm like, well, how do you know me? And he's like, my friend from Epcot sent me a picture of you. Isn't that crazy? Well, that's actually pretty, that's pretty intense. I could, I've never had that in my life. It, it, it's, it's crazy. And, but I think even Twitch is like an example of the six degrees of separation because you can meet someone around the world that has the same idea than, as you. And I think it's so cool. Um, let me read Mr. Moto's next comment. If you want to get a foundation of the kinds of skills that allow you to ask questions in interviews that gets beyond people's barriers, even reading an old book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, would be very uh, a very useful initial resource. Let me show you here, Mr. Moto. I'm actually Dale Carnegie. I've taken all the classes. I actually did a, um, I did a program with Dale Carnegie. I did three programs with Dale Carnegie, actually. I, I did an internship over for, for the Dale Carnegie company, but it's been quite a while since I have reread my How to Win Friends and Influence People book. So I think that, Mr. Moto, I might look into it again. Thank you for, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up. Certificate of Achievement. This is college credits right here. And welcome to the stream today, Mr. Sneaky. Happy New Year, good to see you as always. Yo, how long are you gonna be streaming for? I'd like to watch you while I edit. I'll be streaming for probably another hour and 20 minutes, Sneaks. Um, after we are done with today's podcast, which is so cool because we just jumped straight into it. You know, it was like, Jay was like, I want to do a podcast. And then I was like, a podcast? Well, what are we going to do it about? And Jay was like, and I was like, let's think about it. And then all of a sudden, just bada bing, bada boom, ideas linked up. And that's the power of the six degrees of separation let, let me use this example again because jay wanted to do a podcast came to my stream i'm not against doing the podcast and bam now we're doing a podcast together isn't that crazy jay yeah actually it is i, I didn't expect that to happen i was just kind of like bringing in like my feelings like hey I, I was pondering about this and then you came in like oh cool let's do it yeah i think it's it's so so cool i need a re rum write this comment down really quick reread how to win friends and influence people i have a i have a copy i have two copies i have multiple copies of this book um this is my this is my required reading list that i haven't started yet let me show you what i'm working with right now i'm like a i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a low-key librarian of my own room these are these are the books some of the books on my required reading list that I haven't even started yet. It's it's pretty daunting, but um, I wanted to show you this, Mr. Moto. This is actually the combined edition of How to Win Friends and Influence People plus How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. This is a double Carnegie edition book right here. And then I also have, after this one, after this one, I have, um, I have this. I have Warren Buffett for investors that haven't even started that. But yeah, that's cool. Thank you for um, commenting that. All right, so Jay, let's let's get back to talking about this idea because I think we have a much better, we have a much better idea about, um, about podcasting right now. Would you agree? Yeah, I 100% agree actually. And I have another idea for podcasting book club book clubs like book club podcast right that would be so cool right because i have all these books that i haven't started reading and i think that a book club a book club podcast would be another great idea mr moto has another another comment but you can plan a podcast radio show tv show in the same way running order content segments what's the hook what are the primary messages and secondary message what is the call to action for the listener or viewer and mr moto tell me this do you watch a lot of podcasts because i don't and um one of my achilles heels in content creation is my lack of preparation and planning because for some reason when i plan 
it just becomes really hard for me to maintain my interest in sharing the experience, right? So how do you think that I could, or me and Jay, could learn how to become better at planning out a podcast? Because I would hope that this is not the last one that either of us do. I would hope that we would continue to walk this path. Because Jay, and answer me this truthfully. Do you think, do you feel a little more motivated now to do a podcast? I genuinely do. Like if I have someone who's like willing to work things out with me, even if it's just like a temporary background thing, I'm down. Like it's more like a, you know, I'm willing to do it because someone's willing to help me out kind of thing, you know? And what kind of help do you think that you would want to be able to do a podcast? I mean, if someone's there to like, for example, I'll, I'll even do the whole preparation just to like talk with me because like being alone is kind of awkward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> I remember back when I started Twitch, I had to talk to myself for a long time. There were like there were like hours, like maybe hours. Every stream was like either 30 minutes or an hour. Where I was just talking to myself, but I'm a I'm a pretty go fiery kind of guy, so I can I can do it. But um, I, I get the feeling. I mean, like, I used to have, like, I have, like, maybe two little like, YouTube lives popped up on my channel and then, like, a song that I've made. And then, like, those two little lives are, like, dead. Like, I barely even, like, talk on my own. I'm, like, silent, waiting the whole time. Mm hmm Yeah, I was completely dead. And where do you think you would do a podcast if you were to make one? I would probably try to do it on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And like maybe post it up on YouTube as well afterwards. Yeah. And are you okay with posting this podcast on YouTube afterwards? I'm down. That's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll edit this up and post it on my channel because I thought we had a really productive conversation. And I think this is the coolest part about podcasting, having a productive conversation, right? Because when we're talking about producing value, if we can produce values for ourselves, I think we can definitely produce value for other people. You know, let's do this. Look at this shirt. I bought this for $5 at Forever 21. It is absolutely phenomenal. This this girl is staring into your soul. Do you see this, Jay? I see it. I see. This girl this girl is literally staring into your soul. Uh, Mr. Moto has another comment. Let me read this really quick. Yes, I've watched them and I've produced some radio in the past. Really? That's interesting. The ultimate answer is what's your story? And tell it like a story, casually, relaxed, and convincingly. The core of all human interactions that appeals to people is a story they can relate to. Oh, if you don't mind me, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal whatever you're writing in this comment right now. I'm gonna save it for later, so I can I can write it again. So, would Moto, would you go as far to say that a podcast is just it, it's um storytelling but like a conversational story like you know just like stories back and forth some people that share the same kind of interest and are just talking about a similar topic would you say something like that mr moto and jay what do you think i'm th pretty sure that's exactly what it is honestly all the, pa the podcasts i've watched there'll be like two people in there or even just one person but he has a producer like right in front of him so he would talk to them and they would have a conversation going back and forth and he would tell a story so i believe it's the same thing that is cool and jay you have a fan out there you have a fan thank you for following jay is lame thank you you have a fan i i think it's awesome that you have a dedicated fan out there jay what do you mean uh, someone followed my my profile that says Jay is lame. I think you have an, an admirer out there, Jay. No, that was me. That was you. <laughs> well, you can be your own secret admirer as long as you don't tell anyone, right? Me. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, watch Leo Laporte on Twitch. He is an expert on podcast style. He's a tech podcaster, but listen to his casual, friendly style. I'll take his name down for later, Mr. Moto. I think it's, um, you know, I do think that there is an aspect of having to learn. And I think something that really stops people from um, growing is that the fact that, you know, it's like these, it's like the problems that we face in our life. We're kind of masochistic 
with our own life problems. We're like, you know what, I just need to go through this all by myself. And I need to do this because it's my life, my battle. And then when we, we come at it the same way with learning. We're like, I need to learn this all by myself. I just need to do this, man. And if I can't do it by myself, then I'm going to quit, right? And um, Jay, what do, you, what do you think about like a helping hand? Like if you had been given a helping hand before today, do you think that you would have been able to have the motivation to start a podcast? Yeah, like if I had that so one person who gave me that little push saying, here, go for it, I would have probably started it by now. So um, I think it's, and this is this is a little bit, uh, this is a, a off the topic kind of like physics, bend, bend, I bend physics to fit my ideas, right? Like I, my, my tutor often tells me not to bend the data to fit my arguments, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, it's interesting because Newton has three laws of motion and the first law states that all objects are in a state of stillness until pushed into motion by an external force. The second law states that the greater the momentum, uh, the, the higher the, ex the, the greater the, the gravity, the higher the acceleration. And then the third law states that every action has a, another reaction, right? So how many people do you think are just stopped? They're like stuck in the first law of motion. They're like, they're just waiting for something to come and push them into action, right? They know they want to do it, but they're just, they're, they're stuck there, but no one's coming, right? And I think it's just interesting. Jay, do you think that, would you agree yeah, with, I, with how I place it? 100%, like even I, to a point, will just sit there and be like, okay, what am I going to do now? Like nothing's happening. And I'll just kind of wait for it. And it features a lot of people out in the world who just do the same thing and live their day and be waiting for something to happen. I love that idea because I think, what am I going to do now? What does this question represent? It just, it's being stuck in Newton's law, first law of motion. Being stuck in New Newton's first law of motion, right? It's just, you're kicking the ball down the curve, but like, the, you're kicking the ball down the curve, but like the curve is a circle. So you're just kicking it around in a circle, right? Right. Exactly that. But the curve, but the curve it curves into a circle, into a circle. The curve curves into a circle. Oh my wow. Look at those funny antics. Yeah. I, um, I think it's so interesting because there are so many ideas out there that we can really take and mold for ourselves. And, you know, lots of suggestions by um, by by these these mental giants for us how to live our lives. Yeah, honestly, there's a lot of people who say, like, here, this is how you're supposed to live. This is how you're supposed to do things. And then and you're kind of like, OK, and you just follow it. Yeah. And Jay, tell me, I have a question. Tell me, I wonder if there's like a podcast kind of tag as well. Let me see. Pod. No, there's no podcast kind of tag. But um, tell me, Jay, if you were to do a podcast, how often would you do the podcast? I mean, I'd probably start it off slow, like maybe once a week or something, or maybe like once every two weeks, because like I don't have proper time now but if it generally picks up i'll put more effort into it so do you think that it's it's a matter of, um, what do you think would be a genuine pick up because this is something that i think is interesting right because um when i did my rock bottom podcast i'm telling you this person wrote me a giant comment about the love of jesus christ but they listened to my whole podcast too and gave me other information and i was I was touched. I was like, wow, someone actually listened to everything I said. And um, what what is enough? What is enough um, enough momentum to want to put more effort into this project? I think if I get like maybe just like a little bit of feedback or like constructive criticism into it, mm -hmm. then I'm like, I'm going to keep going. And by little bit of feedback or constructive criticism, do you mean like comments? Like, I like this, I can relate, or like, you need to do this better, or what would you think? I mean, both would do pretty fine, as long as they're not rude about it in a way, like the wording is okay, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that I'm perfectly fine with it. 
Mm -hmm. So, okay, okay, I can, I can, I can understand that kind of just. And before I respond, let me read what Mr. Moto is saying. If you look up the concept of internal and external focus of control, not a type locus of control, not a typo. Also, Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domains. It's a framework to use for trying to structure your thinking, which perhaps would be an add-on to your Newton proposition. Yeah, translated in English, I need a thesaurus. Um, and next comment, Jay does have does Jay does have the voice qualities similar to those of Bob Ross. Jay, I think that right there is some good feedback. I'm confused on that, but okay. <laughs> I think it's because when I think of Bob Ross, sometimes when I'm feeling down, I'm not going to lie. You, you can find me on Bob Ross's channel. If I'm like really stuck and what do I do next? I'm like, let's go watch Bob Ross. I'm like, cabin, cabin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel you. I actually went into another streamer's um stream and they were... And I, I'm going to have to use a dictionary or a thesaurus to, to unpack what you just said, Mr. Moto. But um, I'm going to copy and paste it, and then I'm going to get back to this. Um, what I think is super cool is that, like, Jay, I think that um, the issue that I see with this is because I think everyone wants just a little pat on the back. Everyone just wants a good job, keep going, right? But realistically speaking, do you think that happens a lot? No, it actually doesn't. Like I remember like, for example, even putting a little post up on Instagram, expecting some likes, and then it won't happen straight away. Like it's gonna take a lot of time to get to it. So you gotta put more effort, for example, adding more posts, or putting a little more to your posts, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you gotta like always keep going and have that consistency. So mm -hmm. then at one point when that does happen, you can feel accomplished that all your work is there and it brought you to this moment. And you know, I feel like Twitch is the exact same thing because there have been times where I've streamed like every day and like three times a day. I was crazy back then. And um, I just had, I, was, I wasn't growing, but I felt like I was making progress. I mean, Twitch is a weird thing, but I think that there is an aspect of like consistency. Definitely for me, the best time to stream is actually when I work. So unfortunately I can't stream when I work, which is boo hoo cry me me. But um, I mean, it's okay. I can, I'll have to figure other time slots out and I, um, I can adjust. And this is what I think is cool about scheduling. I, I can be able to adjust this, right? If I don't work Tuesdays and Thursdays, in the afternoons and i can stream tuesdays and thursdays in the afternoons if i work monday wednesday friday in the afternoons i can stream at the night and in the morning and i think it's the flexibility right having a flexibility to make your own schedule jay what do you think about that do you do you find an advantage in having flexibility to post when you want to or do you need to have a rigid structure i think i'd have to 100 percent try things out like for example if i feel like okay this week i'm gonna probably go have that like live stream or whatever podcast happening i'll do it around this time and then it works out fine i'm gonna probably keep doing it until at one point be like okay no now i need a structure like my brain's gonna tell me at that point because i'm more like how i'm feeling in the moment mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i I get that because I'm definitely I'm how I'm feeling in the moment. You know, when I came back and I'm gonna keep referencing this, it was a it was a month of my life. Um, when I came back from Spain, I just I didn't stream at all. Like I just for two weeks I was silent, and by silent I mean like I had the ability, I just didn't have the motivation or desire. And it's so weird because I think that when you put yourself in front of people like when you get on a twitch stream or you start doing something you automatically create you automatically create um the external force to push you into motion right but it's like if you right. if, if you can't click that button it's like you're stuck in the first law right you're just stuck there but as soon as you click the button you will start to build the momentum and it will start increasing and accelerating right exactly yeah 
And that's what I, that's where I think a structure is so important because if you have a structure in place, then it can become habit so that even when you don't feel like it, it's just habit that you just have to click it and then you just have to talk about it. You have to start rolling the ball in one direction, right? Yeah, that works. So Mr. Modo says, so voice dynamics are important to podcasting and people listen to a voice that is capable of passing messages on a level that they do not need to think, but just be. It's all nuances, but those nuances are often the slim difference between like everyone else and the massive success that Bob Ross still has many years after his death. Wait, is Bob Ross not here anymore? No, he died a while back, I think. Oh. Rest in peace, Bob Ross. Right now, I didn't know Bob Ross was dead. I, he's still streaming on Twitch. Is, is, um, well, he lives in our hearts and our memories, I think. And, um, yeah, it's actually, Moto has a great point because when we think about voice dynamics. 1995. Like we were, like we were talking about earlier, Jay, um, Bob Ross is still relevant today. Bob Ross is still relevant and he's still out here helping people like relax. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Rip Bob Ross. He helped me out. He, I had a weird time where I was in Spain and I was just checking things out and, uh, and I just like, um, I saw Bob Ross and I was like, I've never watched this guy before, but I just watched him and I was like, like three hours just passed and I was like, where am I? What year is it? And I think that's what Mr. Moto was getting at. It's just this passing messages on that level that's so subconscious that you can just intake the content and like reprogram some of your machinery without having to think about reprogramming it. Because I think when you listen to a podcast or you listen to anyone talking about anything, right? It's different between listening and trying to get a reaction. Like here on Twitch, there are lots of people that are trolls, right? But I haven't encountered a troll in a very long time. Like when I started streaming on Twitch, there were lots of trolls. But nowadays, I haven't seen a troll in the past long, long time. I'm kind of upset that I don't see them anymore. But, um... I think that um, oh, I, I lost my train of thought. And news, but yeah, he gets three thousand views even on Twitch today after twenty-five years after his death. He, he's been gone for twenty-five years. What, dude? Yeah, that, he died in like ninety-five or something. Dude, I thought he was just rocking the clothing that was back then. I just thought he was like today. He was just painting away. That's wow. Wow, that is something. But yeah, he he does. He still has three thousand views. Twenty five years after his death, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing, and good for him, man. And to honor his memory. And <sighs> Jay, if you have one of those qualities, I think you have some good feedback to get started. Honestly speaking, what do you think? Yeah, if I have a voice like him, I think so. If you have some of those qualities, I think that today we've talked about certain things. And how did you grow that Afro sneaky? Um, dedication. You see, Bob Ross had a schedule, a growing schedule for his hair. And he didn't he didn't go against that schedule, man. I just want to know how he trimmed his afro, like how often he trimmed it, right? Like would it get into like a bigger afro if he didn't trim it? I don't know. You're telling me my whole life I thought a dead man was alive? That would be that's actually really true. My whole life as well, too. Um, in my, my whole life as well, I thought that a dead man was alive because I just, I just, I'm, I'm not even 25 yet. I just learned this right now. Wow. Um, but I turn 25 tomorrow. Tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow is I, my birthday. I figured it out just now, too. But I bring you a... Oh, I gotta celebrate. I'm gonna spam you messages. Please and thank you. Appreciate it much. I'll probably be streaming from 12 to 3 tomorrow. Actually, I may not because I have to go have lunch with um, my father around 11. And um, I don't know how long that's going to last. But when I get home, I'm going to stream. But um, yes, yeah, so it was a wig in the later life. Yeah. Okay, be there so I can be like, happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. 
and Jay, tell me really quick. So I think we we've, we've had a really productive conversation. Um, would you be willing to do a podcast in the near future? Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. And um, would it be a solo podcast or would it be a um, would it be a duo podcast? Uh, whichever works. It could be a duo podcast. I don't really care. Okay, good. And Jay, tell me this. Do you have a way of writing this stuff down, like notes that you can look at or like write, scribble some thoughts down on paper? I, I could probably write down on Google Docs or something. Yeah, I, 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 I'm all about writing. I think that writing helps people remember and reinforce ideas in their head. So if I could um, give you a little Genki wisdom today, I would say write some of this stuff down, you know? Write some of this stuff down and um, keep thinking about it. Okay, definitely. Because you, you have all the flexibility to do this. You just need to keep thinking about it and, um, and just try to make something that will work in the long run. Right. But I have also heard a softening of your tone as I passed my subliminal thoughts to you. It sounds more relaxed. Who, um, me or Jay, Mr. Moto? Use a share file on Microsoft OneNote. I did not know that there were share files on Microsoft OneNote. Yeah, you know. I didn't know that was a thing. We could have just used Google Docs because that you can share and edit on, but. Um, there, there are so many new creations out there that I think that if you didn't watch someone that specialized in technology, you would just not be able to learn about everything, you know? I 100% agree on that, actually. Yeah, like, if you didn't watch someone that was trying to tell you about all the new stuff, it'd just be so hard to learn about the new stuff. And, Moto, what do you mean by, like, my, my tone became more relaxed? Like, could you explain that a little for me? Because I'm trying to process it now, but I'm, I'm hitting a block kind of thing. I mean, it did. As soon as you started talking about something, you had, like, the, like, the will to go for it. You kind of like relaxed a bit and I saw like through the whole camera, your whole body like kind of like slumped and you just kind of went like relaxed. So do you think that that kind of like motion is when, when you are talking about something that you have experience in or something that you're passionate about or something you have knowledge in, you can just, you can less tense up, you know? I think it's, it's the way you sit, the way you act, the way you speak, all of these things are a little subtle, um, subtle ways to influence a discussion and an art podcast Nikki what do you mean by art podcast because I'm not um, super into the art community but um, I'm curious what do you mean by art podcast Nikki? I mean art podcast I would not be able to handle it like first of all like I'm really bad with anything art yeah unless it's a musical context like if I have to play an instrument for example I could grab out my piano and i'll have fun if i'm learning about like a song or whatever i'll have fun on that but if it's like to draw a picture i'm down like i'm gone yeah it's not happening and tell me jay do you play the piano i do you do that's another great thing to bring to your podcast because i play the piano as well and um if you wanted to have a talk about the piano i'd be down to come and talk to you on your podcast about the piano Sure. Sounds like a plan. That could be a podcast. It could be, um, and it could be like, is piano another language? Is piano, does piano, does learning how to play piano make you bilingual? It could be something like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, even languages, for example, would be a good thing to talk about. Like I have my share of languages that I'm kind of learning. You have your languages that you're learning or know all that stuff. Yeah. It could be a good podcast. We have a comment from Mr. Delta Shift. Hey, you ever just charge up your old phone? Just look at pictures on there because you forgot what was on there to reflect on memories. I'm literally charging it right now. Delta, sadly, all of my best pictures are on my old phones, but they're always broken and I can never like charge them because they're just broken. And I, I've lost so many pictures. I've lost so many pictures from Japan. It's, it's, it's quite sad, actually. I've lost so many great pictures from Japan. Did you not back it up on your cloud? I your didn't. Your iPhone cloud? Well, you should have, because that would transfer it. 
Like, for example, if I have, I have a Samsung. Well, thank you very much, Captain Hindside. So all my photos are connected to my Google. Oh. So, I mean, you can literally. Whoa. I, I didn't know that. Oh, thank you. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I can... I did that recently with my Spain photos because my phone started to break. It cracked on its screen. I was like, maybe this is the right time to start backing up my photos. Back up my photos anyway. Yeah. <laughs> They're always backed up. And I even have my text backed up, so yeah. I'm settled. <laughs> Mr. Sneaks says, yeah, I did that before I transferred all my old pictures to my current PC. Some of I've deleted most of my best pictures. Um, and oh uh, yeah, yeah, being a child, growing up, and getting in relationships, and then having messy fallouts and deleting all those pictures. Something I'll never get back. But I mean, I guess they're in my memories. If you relax, I've you'll get more. Of yeah. If, uh, it's 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 a, it's a very human thing to do, just because it's an easy way to like act like you're moving on, but it really doesn't help you move on. It just deletes some like really great picture memories. Yeah, it does. If you relax, you'll get more viewers. That's kind of the shortcut answer. Okay, so I should work on relaxing. Let's do this. Um, I'm not a really relaxed kind of guy. I'm really like uppity. You should have been here earlier, Moto. And do do follow the channel. Come back, Moto. We stream a lot, and I'd love to see you back in the community. Um, you should have seen me when I was talking to Jay earlier. Like right when we started talking about this podcast idea, and I just drank this coffee. I was talking hyper. Jay, how fast was I talking? extremely speedy like i swear to god you were non-stop talking i got one sentence after another dragging out there was like no period just lowercase <laughs> no period it was it was like it was just it was if there was ever an incomplete sentence it was what i was saying you know what i mean it was just comma splice comma semicolons just i was throwing out no, things that even. i'm not used <laughs> none of those just just the words all connected in no those days <laughs> Right, I didn't delete everything Delta Shift says, but I was never I was never sent nudes, so it's okay. Yeah, don't do that. It's never a good idea to send those types of pictures because um, everything is in the collective internet conscious nowadays. Yeah, none of them are the nudes, just pictures I have taken with them. I get old videos from Sony. Eroscon, days boy. Life was simple back then. You know, I think it, it always is a, um, a good idea to just like reflect on the life that we lived in. Actually, um, when we're done with this podcast, which will be a little sooner, um, I do think that we're gonna reflect on some of my life. We're gonna continue writing this story that I was writing earlier. Um, is 